Hello colleagues, uh, today we'll be talking about uh, Starter Set ER023D. So uh, the most important element of an NRS architecture to remember and to, to make it work well is that each of the station beacons they have different ultrasonic frequencies. So in non NRS architecture, all the beacons works on the, work on the same uh, ultrasonic frequency, usually 31 kilohertz. On inverse architecture, it's opposite. So each of them, at least in one submap, must have a different ultrasonic frequency. And out of this is the most important element you need to remember in order not to make a mistake. So if you have a station beacon, look at their uh, white label and you will see their frequency. And this frequency is what these sensors can transmit naturally. Don't try to make the frequency of this uh, transmitting beacon, ultrasonic transmitting beacon, and in inverse architecture, station beacons are transmitting ultrasonic. Don't try to make it inside the dashboard different from their uh, nominal frequency. So if you have, like in my case, uh, okay, 46 kilohertz. Okay, I name it 31, but 36 kilohertz. So this was a mistake. I must use 45. So 46, 45 is the same band. So I must use 45 kilohertz settings inside the dashboard. So 31 was a mistake in this case. Uh, so you need to check each of them and use their, uh, the right settings inside the dashboard. Otherwise, the installation of inverse architecture is absolutely the same as usually. So the key elements are update the software for each of their elements, all station beacons, mobile beacon, modem, and the dashboard. Take the software from the software pack. Don't mix up the software. Always use the software only from the same software pack and update uh, the software to each of the element. This is first. Second, during the update, don't forget to press the default button inside the dashboard so that uh, in the beginning you will have only default settings for each of the element and the modem as well. Uh, you will basically save time because again who knows what, what were the settings before that. Uh, so as soon as you have these uh, basics you will be able to place the beacons inside your room or office or warehouse wherever you are testing it. Since uh, inverse architecture 0 0.2, uh, ER, ER 0.2 is using uh, the Beacons hardware version 4.9, uh, they are not able to talk to each other because they use different uh, ultrasonic frequencies. So it means that you must measure the distance between them and enter manually inside their um, uh, table of distances between all of the beacons, all of the station beacons. By this time, your mobile beacon must be activated as well. So as soon as you enter all the distances, you must press the uh, freeze button on the submap view and you will freeze the submap. Since this is the basic uh, setup consisting only of one submap, you, you need to go to their map view and freeze the map. So as soon as you freeze both submaps and maps, and before that you populated their uh, table of distances with their distance between each of the beacons, the system will work. And in five seconds after that, uh, if you start moving the mobile beacon, the mobile beacon uh, will be tracked and you will see their, the tracking inside the dashboard. Um, usual limitations are the same for all the, the systems. So the maximum distance between each of their station beacons and station beacons and the mobile beacons is uh, less than 30 meters. It must be less than 30 meters because it's defined and limited by ultrasonic signal. Uh, distances between the modem and each of these beacon is limited by radio. And if you have the short antenna, so it's limited antenna, so usually it's around 100 meters. Um, but if you have a full size large antennas, so the distance between uh, the modem and uh, the beacons, station beacons, maybe up to 400 meters. 
But since the Mini RX has a small, tiny, actually, embedded antenna, usually uh, this distance, even where the full-size antenna on the modem would be limited to 100 meters or even less. It's open space. If you're talking about their distance uh, through the walls, it's to it totally depends on the walls. If it's really heavy, uh, thick, whatever, concrete walls or metal walls, it could be really, really limited or even nothing. So we are talking about the open space distances. So um, let me highlight uh, once again, update the software from the same software pack only for each of the elements. Don't forget about the pressing the uh, default buttons. And particularly for inverse architecture, remember to use only right uh, frequencies for ultrasonic corresponding to the hardware of each of the beacons. Don't try to make the ultrasonic frequencies different from their uh, frequencies of the sensors because they're defined by the hardware. You cannot change them. Even though inside the dashboard you can choose whatever. So as soon as you do it, you have a perfect inverse architecture tracking. Uh, another element, of course, which is also valid to all of the systems, abstraction. So in order to track these station beacons, must be visible direct line of sight between the station beacons and the mobile beacons. Think about these station beacons as your satellite. If you don't see the satellites, at least three satellites for 3D, your system will not work. <coughs> Sorry. And if you deploy the 3D system, and before you've seen it, but for example, during the uh, you know, progress of testing or operations, this becomes blocked. The system will not work once again. It will be not less precise. It will be simply not working at all because these two satellites won't be seen. At least three must be visible. So this is why the starter set consists of four beacons. So it's three plus one redundancy. If one is blocked, the system will try to still recover. And the majority of cases will be able to recover and still track it in 3D. If this one is blocked, okay, still these three will be used to, to track the mobile beacon. Uh, but if two of them are blocked, then that's it. No, so you don't have enough beacons. By the way, many people asking uh, whether it's possible to track outside. Yes, it's possible. It doesn't have to be within this rectangle. No, it, it can go up to this. But remember, another element inside the submap is called so called limitation of distance. So it's somewhere here inside the settings. And uh, what it's saying is basically saying how large the submap is. What is the limitation of distance. It means that what is the maximum distance between the farthest station beacon and the mobile beacon. So it may be that if you go outside, this is why we usually recommend that this is 6 by 10 meters and you're driving inside just in order to avoid uh, basics like hitting limitation of distance or using non-standard update rate or something. Use default in the beginning. So nevertheless, you're, you're going, 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 going out. At some point of time, you will see tracking, tra tra tracking, tracking, and no tracking at all. So you are moving, but there is no tracking. So most probably, you simply hit the limitation of distance. So um, I think by default, it's like 30 meters. So this is why usually you are not hitting. But if you don't use default settings, so there may be like 10 meters. So it means that there will be no tracking beyond the 10 meters from the station beacons. Simply not. So use the default or increase to whatever uh, distance you wish to increase. But also remember, if you have the larger limitation of distance, so the uh, travel time, the sound travel time will be more, so the update rate will be lower. So there is always a trade-off. Larger submap, lower update rate. It's valid not only for inverse architecture, but for any kind of non-inverse architecture, inverse 2D, 3D, it doesn't matter. So all this about submaps and limitation of distance is uh, uh, the same requirement. Uh, what I didn't mention, by the way, during the uh, installation, even though it's 3D, you must enter the heights for the station and beacons because the system is not able to calculate the heights for the station beacons. It will be able to calculate the heights of the mobile beacon, of course, against them, uh, but not for the station beacons. So this is why when you install the system, you must enter those heights, formally speaking. Um, but if you install according to our requirements and usually our recommendation is installed on the same height. If you install on the same height each of the station beacons, then even if you make a mistake and forgot to enter the uh, heights of each of the station beacons, at least the system will work perfectly 
because there will be a mistake in height, but it will be not mistake in tracking. Okay, it will be showing like minus two meters, even though it's on zero meters. Okay, you made a mistake because this is zero by default, and you didn't install, uh, on you didn't enter the height on two meters, uh, like it would be required because they are installed on two meters. But you will be able to notice this quite easily, and uh, nevertheless the tracking will be still perfect. So also don't forget to uh, enter the height. Uh, I think that's all, all the most important elements, all let's say uh, peculiarities of the inverse architecture. So as usually, if you have any questions, uh, don't forget to send us a mail to info at uh, and we'll be happy to help you. Thank you. <laughs>